Hi guys, welcome back to Farm Girl Diaries. So the plan for my garden this year was to be the year of the rainbow and it apparently is turning out to be the year of the pest. Uh, I've never had a lot of pests in my garden before. I deal with the normal cabbage moths and aphids here and there, but I really don't have a lot of pest pressure. That has ended. <laughs> I don't know what I have, but I have a lot of pest issues. So let me take you through the garden and I'm gonna show you everything that's happening and then I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do to try to hopefully combat it. So one of the things I'm super upset about is my onions. My onions were looking gorgeous. And I mean, gorgeous. Let me bring you down here. Ooh, they were looking beautiful. And now they're not. So you can see they have started to curl. See, they have like little curls on them. Look at those onions. Oh. So I've done some research and I realized that I have what's called the onion thripe. And what happens is, and I've done this for a lot of them and I'm not gonna do it anymore because I don't know. Maybe my onions can still survive. I don't know, I don't know. When you peel back the onion bulb, inside of it is actually a little sort of larvae. I've, for my onions, they were in the worm stage, which is like a white translucent worm, all the way up to like a brown, almost beetle looking bug. And it's called a thripe. And I've done a lot of research and there's, so there's a lot of thripes, especially with houseplants. There's a lot of thripes, uh, pests, but, uh, I, I didn't, I couldn't find a lot of information about onions. I found one article who said, whip up all your onions and burn them all and destroy them all. But I also saw, found like an onion farmer, a massive, um, onion farmer who said with, with onions come thripes. So I have. I have no idea. I have some really gorgeous onions. These are what all of them looked like before they started curling. So I'm not sure what I have happening here. Uh, well, I, I know what I have happened. I'm not sure how I'm gonna combat it, but I think I'm gonna try. I think I'm going to try to save some of the onion crop and go from there. The next pest I have, again, I don't know what it is. You can see here, I was spray painting today, so I'm covered in spray paint. <laughs> but um, the bottom of my snap pea leaves are really getting eaten, really eaten. But as you move up the plant, the plant looks healthy. Like there's no pests on the top of the plant. So with that, I'm almost leaning towards, it's gonna be like a soil kind of pest, a pest that's only living in the soil. Cause otherwise, why wouldn't the top of the plant be getting eaten? I'm not, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. And then I have one more pest <laughs> that's done damage to a few different things. Uh, and I don't know, this could be an animal at this point. I don't know what this is. So my beans have all sprouted take you in and really show you but something has eaten all of the leaves all of my black beans have been eaten well the vast majority of them and it's just in this section there's some over there that have not been eaten so so I put that fence in over them to hopefully try to keep whatever it is out I'm leaning towards it must be a rabbit or a squirrel but I have not seen a single animal in this garden. I, and if they, if it is something, I don't know how they're getting in. Um, they're leaving my tomatoes alone. They're leaving my peppers alone. Like I've not seen anything anywhere else. But even looking at my green beans, all of those green beans, the whole way back around were eaten. But these guys over here are fine. So I'm really at a loss this year. I've never struggled with pests. I really just don't know what to do. I've been checking the leaves at everything. My cabbages and my broccoli have some pest damage, but they don't have any aphids on them. There's nothing on these plants. I looked at the bottom of those snap pea leaves. There is nothing. 
So I, I looked everywhere. There's, there's nothing. There's no sign of, of bugs. So I, I don't know what to do. I have a plan of attack. We're going to try something and hopefully it works. With gardening, there's obviously going to be pests. With my cabbages and all my brassicas, I normally deal with a, um, an aphid or like a cabbage moth. I definitely deal with cabbage moths a lot with my brassicas. My peppers normally get aphids. My tomatoes normally get um, the, that worm that I'm blanking on its name right now. Well, actually, I don't actually know that my tomatoes get the worm. I don't think I've seen that one. My peppers get aphids for sure. My brassicas get the cabbage moth. But anyway, so pests are definitely a thing that you have to deal with and you have to learn how to handle and learn what to do and how to deal with. Um, but they're also a real big pain in the butt. <laughs> so when it comes for me, for my garden, and I did a lot of thinking, I did a lot of soul searching. Um, when I say like this kept me up one night, my onion thripes kept me up all night. I hope I'm saying that right. It's spelled T-H-R-I-P-E. So I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Um, but when I found out I had onion thripes, that really kept me up all night. I really, I'm really upset about it in all honesty. Like those onions were doing fantastic. And I couldn't find any clear cut knowledge. Some of it said you didn't add enough nitrogen to the soil, but then some of them said you added too much nitrogen. So I'm like, I don't know. I was putting nitrogen on that soil every two weeks like you're supposed to do for onions. So I wouldn't think it would be too much nitrogen. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I don't know. Um, but when it came to trying to handle the, uh, the onion thripes, there are a lot of possible solutions. Um, and even there were even some that were classified as organic, uh, but then it said, don't spray near the bees. Um, so every single chemical that I could have put on my onions to save my onions, they all said toxic to bees. So first of all, I want an organic garden. I don't want to grow something if I had to put a chemical on it, because that defeats the purpose for me. The whole point of me is knowing exactly that these plants don't have anything. They're grown in the dirt. The only additive they have is some organic fertilizer, some cow poop, <laughs> and some broken down compost. Um, and that's it. Oh, they have worm poop too, worm castings. But I like that. I like knowing that this is exactly what is in my, my vegetables. Um, but all of these, chemicals said toxic to bees and I really had the kind of a soul searching moment okay what is more important to you do you want the onions that you've already put so much time and effort in do you want the onions or would you rather lose the onions and possibly other vegetables if this is a really bad pest and just buy it from the market and I realized that unknowingly to me I kind of wanted this garden and all of my gardens to be kind of a symbiotic relationship with the earth you know um i don't do anything i don't do anything to grow these seeds these seeds grow because they want to grow these plants grow because they want to grow i add things that they like that'll help them but in reality i'm not doing anything the sun's the sun the rain the soil it's all doing its own thing so i don't ever want to get to the point that i'm so selfish for what i want that I'm going to do anything that's going to damage the earth. So I don't want to damage the soil. I don't want to damage the bugs. I don't want to damage the bees. I don't want to damage anything in this world for me to grow a couple vegetables. Um, I want us to work together. So basically that said, obviously no chemicals. You're not doing it. You got to find a different way to fight these pests. So... <laughs> If you know what type of pest you have, there are a lot of different things you can do. Like I've seen cinnamon, I've seen like hot soupy water, I've seen vinegar sprays, I've seen a lot of different things that you can do for pests. I don't know what kind of pests I have for some of these things. Like the snap peas that look like they're getting, the, the leaves are completely eaten. I don't know what's doing that. The fact that a lot of my beans, I have some bush beans over here that were eaten, something that's eaten my beans, and I don't know what. Um, again, I've never seen anything in this garden, so I'm like, I'm hesitant to say it's an animal, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't think a pest could go through a bean leaf that quickly. I, I, I just, I don't know. So definitely when it comes to the snap peas, I don't see anything there, but I think there might be something in the soil just because there's no damage the whole way up the snap pea. It's just at the bottom. And then with the onion thripes and with everything else, the future cabbage moths, future aphids, 
I want to try to fight them too. So I got two different things we're going to do today in an effort to be completely organic and in an effort to fight whatever is going on in my garden. <laughs> I'm about ready to put like a camera out here and just watch my peas and see what is there an animal coming in that I just don't know about or is it just a pest that is in very high demand. But the first thing we got that I'm super excited about is we got ladybugs. Aren't they fun? I have a whole pack of ladybugs just crawling around. Um, so with these, I remember going past, driving past one of my local stores here a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago, and they had like on the big billboard, they said, we have ladybugs. And I want to be like, why, why, why do you want ladybugs? <laughs> Who buys ladybugs? That's just a fly. That's just an insect you could find anywhere. Who buys ladybugs? I buy ladybugs. <laughs> so ladybugs are actually a super, super great pest. So when I'm going down this route of organic pest control, a lot of what you're going to find is going to be beneficial insects. So ladybugs are really great. Ladybugs eat everything. They eat aphids. I don't even know honestly what all they I didn't bring my paper out but ladybugs eat a lot of things so when it came to cabbage moth aphids my onion thripes everything said with well, a little bit of research I found but everything was kind of conclusive try ladybugs so I got this is supposed to be 1500 ladybugs but uh it doesn't look like 1500 <laughs> but it's a lot of ladybugs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just spread this this is mainly gonna go in my onion bed but I'm gonna kind of spread it around and then hopefully these guys will reproduce and kind of stay in this garden um they're supposed to they're supposed to as long as they have something to eat they're supposed to reproduce and stay in this garden the second thing I got is another beneficial insect I got nematodes and this isn't actually it doesn't say what it is but this is nematodes and there are five million in here it's a it's almost like a micro um like it's a very small worm What's what I'm looking for? It's a, you need a microscope to see the worm. I can't think of the word. It's, I can't think of the word that it is right now. It's in my head. But you need a microscope to see the worm because there are 5 million in here. And these are really great for fighting pests in the soil. So I think with my snap peas, I have pests in the soil. So I'm going to use these currently in the beds that I know have pests. And we'll go from, we'll kind of go from there. So first, we're going to do my... Now, first we're going to do the nematodes. So in order to do the nematodes, I'm going to dump this packet into a bucket, uh, filled a five gallon bucket filled with water and then stir well. And then I'm just going to, yeah, it didn't do anything. <laughs> and then I'm just going to, I can't, I can't open it. Why can't I open this? Why is this so difficult for me? I don't know. I'm struggling to open this. Um, oh, I have it open somewhere. And this nematode just comes out like a powder. As you can kind of see, I dropped a little bit on my hand. It's just a powder. But it's 5 million little worms. Let me show you what that looks like. Powder. I'm going to go dump it in my 5-gallon bucket. Sure, with a stick. And then I'm going to pour it over the places that I really think I'm suffering with a lot of soil pests. Ooh.
Now that would have obviously have worked better if I had a sprayer, but I didn't. So <laughs> we just dumped it some places and I'll see if we see any kind of change. Hopefully we do. I need to get my scissors and now we're gonna release our ladybugs. So it said to release your ladybugs after you had watered. So I think that little bit of nematodes, <laughs> nematode water was probably good. I will say, I, uh, I put wood chips out on this bed this year, thinking, you know, it would make it look nicer. And it absolutely did. But at the same time, the wood chips hurt all of my body. <laughs> they hurt the feet, they hurt the knees, they hurt it all. So I just gotta figure out how to get, there's like a metal piece on here wrapped around. I'm trying to figure out how to get that out. I guess we're gonna do it this way without cutting any ladybugs. So I'm gonna release these um, in multiple places around the garden. I don't really know how to release them because they don't just fly away. So it said to do this after sundown when it's kind of cool. So let's release them. So let's go ahead and release them. Okay, I released all the ladybugs and that was actually a lot of fun. Um, just there were so many ladybugs at one point, they were covering my hand. I thought it would freak me out, but it didn't because ladybugs are, I always loved ladybugs. I think they're fun. They're not like a ugly bug. They're not a gross bug. They're a fun bug. So I'm hopeful that this treatment worked or at least I have some sort of success. And if I do, I can buy more, um, more of everything. We'll see, but I need to do something to get my pest under control. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for hanging out with me in the garden while I try to battle these things. And I hope to see you in the next video.